Inflammation is a real <laughs> Yep, I said it. <laughs> Inflammation can cause a lot of harm in our bodies in so many different ways, but I'm going to be talking today about how inflammation can negatively impact the health of our gut and our vagina. Now, I want to jump right into this because I have so much information to share about this. First of all, I'm going to share what happens when our bodies, especially our guts and our vaginas are in this state of inflammation and how we can avoid it with our diet. Let's start off with what inflammation is. So inflammation is the body's immune response to something that it doesn't like, whether it be an environmental trigger or a dietary trigger or even an injury. It is the body's immune response and reaction to something that is an irritant. For example, if you cut your finger, usually the area around the cut is red and swollen and hot. That is a sign of inflammation. Another sign of inflammation is if you eat something and you feel really congested or mucusy after you eat something, that is another sign of inflammation. The way inflammation can show up in the gut is if you experience excessive abdominal cramping, bloating and gas, and even diarrhea. If you ever notice if you eat something and all of a sudden you have the runs, that is your body's inflammatory response. There's also something called IBS, which is super common, a lot of people experience and struggle with, and this is an inflammatory response in the bowels. So these are just some of the ways that inflammation shows up in our gut. Vaginitis is a term that describes vaginal inflammation and happens when our normal, healthy vaginal microbiome, all the bacteria and funguses that live in our vaginal microbiome, that beautiful vaginal flora that we have, vaginitis happens when that microbiome is thrown off balance and there is an excessive overgrowth of yeast and bad bacteria in the vagina. This vaginal inflammation or vaginitis can be caused by a few different things like an infection, a change of hormones, or something that irritates the vagina, whether it be a toy or a scent or a fragrance or a lotion or anything unnatural that you put onto or into your vagina, it can cause inflammation, which can lead to a yeast infection or a bacterial infection. Also, when our body is in an inflamed state, it weakens our immune system, which means we are more susceptible at getting herpes outbreaks or having some kind of issues with an, other viruses like HPV and even the common cold. So basically, when our gut and our vaginas are in an inflammatory state or in an inflamed state, they are not happy. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen me talk all about the gut and vaginal health connection. They are connected to each other and dependent on each other. And diet is so important when it comes to maintaining our inflammation in our bodies and avoiding it, as well as within our guts and in our vaginas. And I'm gonna share with you my top recommendations of foods to stay away from that tend to cause inflammation in the body, as well as my top recommendations of foods to include in your diet that are anti-inflammatory. Okay, so the foods you want to stay away from that typically cause inflammation for most people are everybody's favorite, of course. There's gluten, dairy, and sugar. These are the three main inflammatory foods that cause inflammation in the body. And just notice how your body reacts when you eat these foods. Do you get that mucusy, congested feeling after you eat dairy? Do you experience any kind of funny tummy issues after you eat gluten, like wheat or pasta or bread, anything with gluten in it? Do you notice a sensitivity after you eat sugar? I know I do. The way inflammation shows up for me in my body is I get a yeast infection if I eat too many of these things. 
So it's really important to avoid these top three, gluten, dairy, sugar, inflammatory foods. I know they're everybody's favorite. It's really hard to give up these foods when you love sweets and you love eating cheese and drinking milk and you love all the bread and pasta. But if you notice that you are experiencing chronic either gut health or chronic vaginal health issues, these are the things that you need to start taking away from your diet. Those aren't the only foods that cause inflammation in the body. Anything that is unnatural, that's what I always say. If it doesn't grow, you need to reconsider putting it into your mouth. <laughs> so things like junk foods, fried foods, and processed foods are really important to be mindful of avoiding in your diet because these foods also typically contain all kinds of hidden artificial ingredients, especially the gluten, dairy, and sugars, and can cause inflammation in the body without you even realizing that these are the sources of your inflammation. So you really want to minimize the processed foods, the junk foods and the fried foods because they are also contributing to any kind of inflammatory response in your body that you may have and that you may be sensitive to. Other things to be mindful of are artificial sweeteners and anything that has artificial sweeteners in it and pop and like sodas and all kinds of these sport drinks and anything that has sugar or artificial sweeteners in it, like aspartame and those types of things, sucralose or whatever it's called, you really need to be mindful of those foods and those sweeteners because those are also very inflammatory foods and they do cause inflammatory responses in the body. And if you consume enough of these things over time, if you experience chronic gut and chronic vaginal health issues, you need to start weaning off of these things because they are doing more harm than good. Two other unsuspecting food groups, as I'd like to call them, also cause a lot of inflammation for a lot of people. And a lot of people are sensitive to these things and don't even realize it. And these food groups are nightshades and high FODMAP foods. Let's start with nightshades. So nightshades contain a natural chemical called solanine, which is considered to be an inflammatory food or an inflammatory chemical that causes an inflammatory response in the body. And some people are sensitive to nightshades and some people aren't. Sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. But nightshade vegetables include tomatoes, white potatoes, eggplant and peppers. So if you notice that you are sensitive to any of these foods, it's because your body is irritated by them and responding with an inflammatory response. The next unsuspecting food group are the high FODMAP foods. What does that mean? Okay, I'm gonna actually read it from my notes and on my computer because I don't know it off by heart, but it stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, which are short chain carbohydrates or sugars that the small intestine doesn't absorb very well. So that's not really important. I just wanted to share what that stands for. And a lot of people are really sensitive to these foods and don't even realize it. And it's just because these people's particular small intestines have a hard time digesting these foods. Also, a lot of people who struggle with IBS are very sensitive to these FODMAP foods. So if you are somebody that experiences chronic inflammation in your gut and your bowels, you want to stay away from the FODMAP foods. And these foods are some vegetables that are mostly cruciferous vegetables, but like things like onions, garlic, broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. I know those are all of my favorite things, but sometimes I do notice that my gut doesn't like them. Sometimes I'll get excessive bloating and gas after I eat them, so they are creating some kind of inflammation 
particularly for me personally, but a lot of people who experience a reaction like I do after they eat these foods, it's because they're a high FODMAP food. There are other fruits actually that are particularly stone fruits like peaches and cherries that are also high FODMAP. I'm just referring to my notes as I go along because I don't know them all off by heart. Then we've got dried fruits and fruit juice concentrate. These can also cause inflammation in the gut for a lot of people. Beans and lentils, wheat and rye, particularly in breads and pastas, also gluten. We've got dairy products that contain lactose like milk and cheese and yogurt that are dairy. Then we've got nuts like cashews and pistachios can cause inflammation for some people also because these nuts are prone to mold when they grow, which also can create an inflammatory response in both your gut and your vagina. Excessive mold, we don't like. <laughs> and sweeteners and artificial sweeteners you want to stay away from. Now, some people are more sensitive to these foods than others. Some people are really sensitive and some people aren't sensitive at all. But if you are wondering if you are somebody that is sensitive to these foods, your body will tell you that it doesn't like it pretty quickly after you eat them. So just observe how your body feels after you eat these foods and if you notice any kind of sensitivity, if you notice that gut inflammation with abdominal bloating, cramping and gas, or if you notice a burning sensation, itchy sensation in your vagina, like you feel like you're getting a yeast infection, maybe it goes away within a day or two or just is temporary. It may be also if your skin reacts in any way, that's also your body's inflammatory response saying like, oh, I don't like that. So you just have to listen to your body and it will tell you, it will give you very, very clear messages. So if you're wondering if you are somebody that experiences sensitivities to these foods and inflammatory responses to these foods, you'll know because your body will tell you pretty quickly. So now that we know what causes inflammation in your diet, Let's talk about some of the anti-inflammatory foods that are important to include into your diet to help you reduce inflammation in your body. I usually say eat the rainbow of natural foods, fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, eat the rainbow. But as I just described, some of those fruits and vegetables are inflammatory. And again, you just have to listen to your own body when you eat those foods to see if you respond. But usually I would say, eat the rainbow of fresh fruits and vegetables and try to eat as much fresh foods as you can. Good quality sources of protein. If you are a meat eater, making sure that they're consciously raised or organic or grass fed choices of meat, that's better for the animals and for you. And if you are a plant-based eater, make sure that you are including enough protein in your diet from good sources. Some of the main anti-inflammatory foods are greens, spinach, kale, collard greens, Swiss chard, arugula, all of the greens, those are anti-inflammatory. Berries that don't have the stones, so like strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, those are also anti-inflammatory. Good fats are also really good, especially with omega-3 fats. So like salmon, flax, walnuts, eggs, avocado are also really good to eat. Also good quality oils like extra virgin olive oil. Nuts and seeds are also really great like walnuts, like pecans, like pumpkin seeds. Those are also anti-inflammatory. And all of these things can be included in your diet in so many different ways. So if you experience chronic gut or chronic vaginal inflammation and however it shows up for you, whether it be with diarrhea after you eat something specific or the abdominal cramping, bloating and gas, or if you are experiencing chronic vaginal infections like yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, HPV or herpes outbreaks, it is a really good sign that your body is in a state of inflammation. And these are the foods that you want to avoid in your diet to prevent inflammation, which is gluten, dairy, sugar, all the junk foods, fast foods, 
fried foods, anything that is unnatural processed foods, as well as the high FODMAP foods and the nightshades. If you do experience chronic vaginal health or gut health issues, you want to eliminate these foods out of your diet. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your health. And there is so much that you can do with your diet if you are experiencing chronic inflammation, chronic gut health issues, and chronic vaginal infections. And these things are really important to be mindful of so that you can reduce your inflammation to reduce these chronic health issues if you do experience them. Our goal for you is to become the superhuman version of yourself, the bi-optimized woman. If you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, please hit the like and subscribe button below and the little bell notification to get notified when I create more videos like this. And let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if you have any other suggestions of videos that you'd like to see me talk or things that you want to see me talk about in the future. If there is any questions, if you have any topic suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.